Hey, back again, good stuff. So last video we uh, were basically outlining the arpeggios, major and minor of the G major scale. And then I did a little example of how you might want to improvise or start improvising with these little three note triads to create um, an, an interesting line. Now, what I want to do now is just outline a major and minor seven chord and a minor seven flat five chord, uh, which is, uh, going to form the, the whole chords of the G major scale. And the order of the chords will be falling, and this is the same for every musical key, every major key, the, the, the chords will fall in a major, minor, minor, major, major, minor, minor, major sequence. Obviously a couple of those have a different quality to them. There are um, the basic major seven, minor seven. Then we have the fifth chord of the scale, which is called the dominant seven chord. And then we have the seventh chord of the scale, which is called a minor seven flat five or a half diminished chord, because it's got a, a minor third, a minor seven and a flattened fifth in, in the chord. That has a particular function as well, used in jazz. And the dominant chord also, has a particular function. And the dominant chord, which is chord number five, is a major chord, but it has a minor seven. So it's like a, a mixture of major and minor, which gives it its tension. So what I want to do to begin with is just to outline again to review the, the distance or the, the interval, and what it looks like of a major third. So here I'm playing string six, fret number three, and then I'm playing string five, fret number two. And those are a semitone, you know, apart, or a, um, a half step. And uh, just recognizing that interval in itself, if I see that on another string, for instance, let's say, for instance, I see it on the fourth and the third strings, I can hear it's got a major quality to it. If I flatten that, that third, minor quality to it and that is what the interval looks like of a minor third on an adjacent string. So you need to recognize those two intervals, major third and minor third. The chords are created using a stacking of, minor, of major and minor thirds upon top of one another. If I take the G chord for instance, the, th the first three notes are G G, A, B, the third, and then B, C, D, the fifth. And you notice those are three notes apart from one another. G, A, B, three notes. B, C, D, three notes. So from the fifth note to the seventh note, if we count D, E, F sharp, there is again is another third. And if we look at the, um, the interval of the major thirds and minor thirds and compare them, we can see that it's going to look like a stacking of minor and major thirds. So the first interval is the root and the fifth. Uh, sorry, the root and the third. Now if I just put the third note in a different position upon the sixth string seventh fret B and play the third and the fifth see that there's the minor interval. So the first and the third are a major interval, but the third and the fifth look are the minor interval. They've got a, seven, uh, a total between them. Now, the seventh, if I look, go from the, the fifth note here on the fifth string, D, and I play a, a major third on the fourth string, there's the major interval again, and this note here is the major seven, which is what we need. So here's the major third, for the root and third. There's the, the third and the fifth interval there. And here is the fifth and the seventh interval. So I've identified those. Now if I play those individually, the notes are first, third on the fifth string, fifth, and now seventh, F sharp. That's string four, fret four. And then the root note is just one semitone above the seventh. And now I've got my G 
major seven arpeggio. Now remember from the other videos, we said the third can be placed on the sixth, this on the moment it's on the fifth string, can be placed on the sixth string. So I can play the same major seven chord in a two different fingerings. So, the minor seven arpeggios, they are basically consisting of a flattened third and a minor seven, a flattened seventh, right? So, if I, if I want to turn this G major chord into a G minor chord, I don't want to do that in terms of the scale, but just to illustrate what you do with the notes, I would flatten the third, move that third down a semitone, to my fifth note here on the fifth string and then the seventh I'm going to flatten that as well so I end up with a G minor 7 chord or G minor 7 arpeggio now that third remember I can play that on the uh, sixth string as well so I have an alternate fingering a second fingering for that chord third flatten that then play my fifth there's the major seven I flatten that and I get my minor seven now don't forget I said that the dominant seven chord that's chord number five that has got it's a major major chord but it's got a minor seven in it so let's say for instance this G chord I'm going to play the major third the fifth of the chord, one, three, five, but instead of playing the major seven, I'm going to lower that and make it into a dominant seven chord. One, major third, fifth, minor seven, and then the root. And there's my dominant seven chord. Now, that's for chord number five. Chord number seven, which is going to be an F sharp minor 7 flat 5 that is going to be the minor 7 triad but with the flattened 5th so again there'll be two fingerings we can play for that there were two fingerings for the dominant chord I better do the second fingering haven't I so 1, 3, 5, 7 if I put the 3 on the 6th string For the minor seven flat five, I'm going to outline the minor seven chord again. Minor third, five, but it's going to be flattened. Then the minor seven, and then the root. So one, minor third, flat five, minor seven, and root. And there's a second fingering for that. video I'm going to play all the sequence of major 7, minor 7, dominant 7 and minor 7 flat 5. Okay, hope you got all that. Any questions? Leave them in the comments below.